to Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. Just two verses. The book is Colossians. The chapter is 2. The verses are 9 and 10. We serve the awesome, the amazing God. Hallelujah to the Lord. We serve the awesome, the amazing, the anointed God. We thank God for who he is and what God has already done. Colossians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. In the New Testament, when you found it, you discovered these words. For in him. For in him. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily and you are complete in him you are complete in him you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power I want to talk about in him in him Okay, now make it plain. Now come on. In in him. In, in him. In, in him. In him. Colossians, Paul writes in chapter two, he gives us direct criticism of the Judaizers as well as he gives us criticisms of the Gnostics. You see, in Paul's day, there were people called, there's a group, there's a sect that was called the Judaizers. And there was a sect that's called the Gnostics. 
Oftentimes in Paul's letters, he writes to them as well as to us to set straight some things that were going on during that time. He writes to us to remind us that Jesus is the one who completes us. He reminds us that it not, it's not something or somebody else that completes us. It is only Jesus yeah. who completes and you're right. us. You see, the Gnostics believe that the body was evil in and of itself. All right. That the body, the physical body was evil. And because the physical body was evil, we need some things and some bodies to complete us. The Gnostics also believed that Jesus was just a mere spirit. A spirit that just happened to come up every now and then. That Jesus was merely a spirit. He wasn't God in the flesh. He was not a man of God. He was just simply a spirit. They believed, that the Gnostics believed, that because Jesus was just a spirit, God had divided himself into several angelic beings. And these angels or angelic beings represented God. So they believed that several different angels represented God. They, they believed that, that Jesus was a spirit. They believed that the body was evil in and of itself. And they believed that several spirits represented God. The, Ju Ju the Judaizers also believed that there was special knowledge and there was special religious work that made them Christians and ma made them complete in Christianity. So the Gnostics believed that Jesus was just a mere spirit and they also believed that God had divided himself into several angels as well as they believed along with, with the, the fact that they thought that the body was always evil and there was no hope for the body. The Judaizers, the Judaizers believed that if you had special knowledge, if you were deep and wonderful, then you were complete in your Christianity. All right, all right. The, Ju the Judaizers believed that your religious works, what you did for the Lord would complete you and make you special unto the Lord. But Paul explains in the Colossian text that Christianity and completeness in Christ is only in Jesus the Christ. It is in him. It is in him. It is in him alone that it is only in Jesus the Christ. If we're going to be complete, if we're going to be fulfilled, we can only be fulfilled through Jesus. So stop depending on your insurance company. All right. Don't depend on your spouse or your friends, your buddies, your dogs, your cronies, your cliques. Don't depend on other folk to make you complete. Yes. The last lie he told you, you believed him, and, and now he's long gone, and he cannot complete you. And she told you she will always be with you. She will always stand by you. But now you know that you are not complete through her. Your children will make promises to you. Mama, when I get grown, I'm going to take care of you and you will never have nothing else to worry about. <laughs> Let me just say to you, don't believe that stuff. Don't. And if it happens, it's a bonus. You need to trust in Jesus right. and Jesus alone. The first point he makes here in verse number nine, he says, In Jesus abide the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In other words, Jesus' body, Jesus bodily, Jesus in his body represents the full Godhead. And not only does it represent the full Godhead, not only does Jesus represent the full Godhead, he is God in the body. Yeah. Yeah. We have to come to the conclusion. That there is a sense of incarnation. There is incarnation. It is the incarnate Christ. Jesus himself that appeared on planet earth. It is God in one flesh. It is Jesus. He is the incarnate God. Right. 
right. Now we don't believe in reincarnation, but this is incarnation. It is the incarnate God appearing on planet Earth in Jesus. All right. And so we have to understand that the fullness of the Godhead abides in Jesus Christ on planet Earth in the body of Christ. God is in Jesus. Jesus is God, and we are complete because God is in Jesus. All right. In this text, when it talks about the fullness of the Godhead bodily, he simply means that Jesus is the deity. He is the superior one. He is the whole. He is the influencer. He is the divinity himself. Jesus is the full Godhead himself. He is the visible image of the invisible God in the flesh. Now, Buddha is not the image of God. Confucius is not the image of God. Uh, Muhammad is not the image of God. But Jesus is the visible image of an invisible God. Paul argues his case in this text, and he tells them, secondly, in him we have completeness. All right. In who? In Jesus. Amen. We are complete in him. Come on now. Stop letting other folk think that they are completing you yeah. because you are complete in Jesus. Yeah. Don't let other people try to give you a bad day. Don't let other people try to down your self-esteem, trying to make you think that you are nothing because you are not with them. The text declares, in him, we are complete. This word complete means that we have put off the power of sin. We, we have no longer been delivered over to sin, but we've been rescued from sin. This word complete means that we are now fulfilled in our spiritual lives because of Jesus the Christ. Don't let folk think that they are so spiritual that they try to tell you what to do and you ought to do what they tell you to do simply because they are more spiritual than, than you are. You need to get to a point where you understand if Jesus is in you, you are spiritual just like they are. Don't let folk tell you because you don't observe this ritual and that ritual, you are not spiritual. You are spiritual because you are complete in Jesus Christ. This word completion means that you are perfected in him. You are delivered through him. You are set free because of him. You are forgiven because of him. And now that you've been given a new life in Christ, you are complete in him. He says to us that we are complete in Jesus Christ. We have put off the old man and put on the new man. That means that what we used to do, we just don't do it anymore. Where we used to go, we don't go with the same attitude anymore. The people we used to hang out with, now we're telling them what's right instead of telling them what's wrong. We are complete in him. The third thing he points out to us is the fact that in him, lies the full Godhead of all power and all principality. All right. In him, who, who is him? In Jesus, in Jesus the Christ, lies the full Godhead of all power and all principality. No, you're right. Paul said to us in Ephesians uh, chapter 6, he says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, right. but we wrestle against principalities, against powers of darkness in this world. We wrestle not against blood and flesh. We wrestle not about the things we see, but we're wrestling among the things in heavenly places. Things we can't see. Things that we can't see going on. We are wrestling among principalities. We're wrestling among powers and, and spiritual beings. We're not wrestling among physical being. I know sometimes you look at your enemies and you think they're just of the devil, you, they're just the devil, but let me just tell you, it's the devil's influence that's going around that person. We wrestle with principalities, stuff in high places, stuff that we can't see, the authorities, we wrestle against those things in spiritual places. Since you have your new birth experience, you don't have a need but anything or anybody, you are complete in him. And he is the full Godhead. 
Jesus the Christ is. He is the all-sufficient Christ. He's the all-sufficient God. He is the Savior. He is our Lord. He is God himself in one person, uh, the physical body of Jesus Christ. The good thing about God, he is one God in three persons. Jesus represents one of those persons. In him we have, uh, Paul says, in Acts chapter 17 and verse 28, Paul declares, in him we live, in him we move, and in him we have our being. So your lifestyle ought to be generated and, and produced around him. You ought to walk with him. You ought to acknowledge him. All we need is in him. And all we have is in him. All that we are going to be will be found in him. All that we are is in him. Thank God for him because he is the one that makes a difference in our lives. All that we will be will be found in him. Our influence is in him. Our authority is in him. Our hope is in him. Our health is in him. Our rights are in him. Our liberty is in him. Everything we have will be found in him. Our dreams are in him. Our joy is in him. Our hope is in him. Our faith is in him. Everything that is concerning us are in him. Our love is in him. Our endurance is in him. When you think you're about to give up, when you think you're about to quit, you need to look, at, look to him. Our focus ought to be on him, and our deliverance is in him, and our, our faith ought to carry us to our strength in him. Regardless of what we see around us, our faith ought to be made strong in him. Paul says to us, as he said to the church of Colossae, you need to remember that you can't believe like the Gnostics believe. That Jesus is just a mere spirit. You can't believe like the Judaizers believe that, that Jesus is someone that you can get close to in your Christian walk is made closer and closer through your knowledge and your works. Oh, there are some educated people around, and they have come to the conclusion because they have an education that they are stronger Christians because of their education. Let me tell you, seminary is good, but if you're not in him, seminary becomes cemetery. You got to be found in him. You got to realize that in him, there's the fullness of the Godhead. The superiority is found in him. I just want to tell you today, if it had not been for him, Calvary just would have been another hill. If it had not been for him, it just would have been a hill shaped like a man's skull. If it had not been for him. I would have been dead and gone, sleeping in my grave, but he protected me if it had not been for him. But thank God for him. <laughs> Over 2,000 years ago, he did him. He took a dogwood tree. He did him did. And he marched up Calvary's hill. He transformed that hill to not just a simple tree, uh, not just a simple hill. The cross would have been a simple tree if it had not been for him. Thank God for him because him took the tree. Him marched up the hill. Him died for you and me. Him did it. All I have is because of him. All I will be will be because of him. They killed him. They nailed him tight. They stressed him wide. It was because of him. He died, I tell you, on a star hill called Calvary. It was because of him that we live now. It's because of him we have our feet. They took him off the cross. They laid him in a bar of tomb. Who did they lay in the tomb? It was him they laid in the tomb. They laid my Lord in your God. Jesus of Christ, they laid him in a tomb. It was a bar of tomb, I tell you. They laid him in a tomb. Out of that Thursday morning, he gave up the tomb. He got up with all power. And because of him, and because of him, he, he took his head rag. He took his napkin. He folded up right knee. Who did it? Him did it. He folded up, I tell you. He said to us, I'm getting up from the grave, but don't worry about it. One of these days, 
him is coming back again. He called a cloud and got out of here. Him got out of here. And him is all made his way up to heaven. And him is sitting making intercessions for you and me. Him is doing it, I tell you. And because of him, one of these old days, at the trump of God, him gonna catch a cloud. And him at the trump of God will ride back in here. And him will make a difference in our lives. Those who died in him. <laughs> Those who died in him who are no longer with us today. The Bible says in Thessalonica, Paul says to the church in Thessalonica in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, you don't have to worry about them who have died in Christ. One of these old days, at the trump of God, at the voice of the archangel, yay, thank God for Jesus. He will catch a child and, and ride on back in him. Ride on King Jesus. No more suffering. He's going to crack the sky. The dead in Christ shall rise first. And those of us who remain will be caught up in him. And we will forever be with the Lord. Thank God for him. We will forever be with him. And the Bible that said, that said we will join the four beastly creatures round the throne of God. We will join the 24 elders round the throne of God. Crying out, holy, holy, holy. Blessed is the man the foundation of the world. It's in him we live. It's in him we move. It's in him we have our very being. Thank God for Jesus. I thank God for Jesus. Because had it not been for him, I would have been sleeping in my grave a long time ago. But because of him, I'm still walking around. I would have been dead and gone. I was on my way to hell. And some of y'all can testify this morning that if it had not been for him, you were too mean to live, wasn't fit to die. But because of him, he rescued you. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Thank God for him. Thank God for him. Praise God for him. His name is Jesus, the conqueror king of Calvary. And if you're here today and you don't know him, I want to remind you, it's in him that you have an opportunity. It's in him that you can live forever. It's in him that you can make a difference. Thank God for Jesus. The door of the church is open. The invitation is given. You can come right now. Back home, they would say you can come by letter. You can come by baptism. You can come by salvation. Or you can come by a Christian education. Or a Christian experience. You can come. But you can't afford to leave this room without getting to know him. Him that have died. Him that they, they buried in a bar tomb. Him that rose early that third day morning. For your sins and mine. Him is here today. We need to be found in Him. The door is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to come to Him. So don't wait till you get it right because you'll never get it right. Don't wait till you quit sinning because you'll never stop sinning without Him. The invitation is given. You can come to Jesus just as you are. Don't wait till next Sunday. Next Sunday is not promised to us. Don't wait till next week. Don't wait till Wednesday night. It's not promised to us. The door is open. Invitation is extended. You ought to come to Jesus just as you are. He will save you. He will make a difference in your life. The door is open. Come to Jesus just as you are. Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Just now. Come to Jesus. 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 Come to
Father God, we thank you. We bless your name. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you do. We thank you for him. We thank you, Lord, that we can walk in him. We can survive in him. And we can be blessed by him. We thank you for what Jesus has done on the skull hill called Calvary. We thank you for resurrecting power. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. And we thank God for who he is and what he has already done. We praise God for who he is and what he has already done. He is the awesome, the amazing, the tremendous God. Let me thank those who are worshiping with us by live streaming. Thank you for joining us here at the New Beginning Church, 4251 Shiremai Road. Thank you so much for joining us. Whenever you're in the Houston area, please feel free to come by and visit with us. New Beginning Church, 4251 Shiremai Road, 77048. Here in Houston, we are at the point of taking up the offering. If you'd like to mail in the offering, please feel free to do so. New Beginning Church, 4251 Shiremai Road. Thank you so much for joining us. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We thank God for who he is and what God...